Quick, hold your breath! <gasps> Wait, hang on. I can't do a video where I don't talk. Might as well use Windows Move Maker at that point. Also, if you're still holding your breath, you can breathe again. You're welcome. Uh, thankfully, I just saved your life, so again, you're welcome. But it's all because we need to breathe to live, right? But I mean, why? Well, what's, what's the point of it all? Well, there is none, but that's not the point of this video. We're talking about breathing, or rather, the lack thereof, and how it could apply to certain Pokémon, like Deoxys, whom I love tremendously. So let's get going. Dogging. And hey, do you ever get that itchy to go play an epic game? Then have I got the one for you, Zoo Kurosaki. Big thanks to Bleach Immortal Soul for sponsoring this video. All their support helps us keep on keeping on. In the all-new, officially licensed RPG Bleach Immortal Soul, you can revisit all of the classic stories and voice actors from the original anime. But don't be sad, though, because that doesn't mean you're stuck with the basic. You can unlock and compose your team with all of your favorite characters. Really, ganga up on those, Hollow. Figure out your team composition and order of attack and time those attacks with skill to greatly raise your chance of victory. And if you're feeling kuchiki enough, you can try your hand at PvP, Battle Arena, and Roguelike modes. I love having options like this. And they keep adding a CON of new content in updates. And if you check it out now with the link in my description, you'll not only help support this channel, but you also can use this code here for a free kickoff prize. Gotcha token, soul jades, and a ton of gold. She no way should you miss this opportunity. Jump in now so that when your friends come and tell you about it later, you can say, oh, I know say, and thanks again. Just like blinking, breathing is a natural process, an almost background process in our minds. Breathing is essential to our health. It's pretty common knowledge that you need to breathe. Though if these last few months have taught us anything, it's that pretty common knowledge doesn't exactly mean everybody has it. Uh, even going minutes without breathing can be deadly. I mean, you can go weeks without food or even days without water, but oxygen? You need that stinking all the time. Oxygen is the delicious element that we all crave every moment of the day and the night. In fact, the largest organs in your body are actually your lungs. Step aside, skin, because I said inside, not outside. Though what really counts as inside, because the skin is kind of like the barrier, isn't it? Well, anyway, oxygen is pretty important to get to your cells because your cells kind of need it. Your cells need oxygen to convert the nutrients you eat into energy for your body. It's basically the fuel source that lets us access our fuel sources. The byproduct of this process is carbon dioxide, the stuff we breathe out. But that's just like basic breathing, you know? Let's get deeper. Get it? It's a deep breath. Your lungs intake air because the diaphragm expands their volume, creating a vacuum effect, pulling air into your body from around. Which is why staying near clean air is very recommended, not stinky, polluted, toxic air. Because the air goes down into the lungs and into these very small grape-like cells called alveoli. These have tons of capillaries, very, very tiny blood vessels where the oxygen is basically caught by the passing blood cells. These blood cells are then circulated by the heart to all of the different parts of the body, and Thus, it transports the oxygen to all of the places it needs to go, which is your everything. And boom! Energy to do it all over again! But, of course, with a little bit of extra energy afterwards for all of the extra activities, like living and not dying and stuff. You know, normal things. And boy, do I love living my normal, absolutely human life. What with the blood running and the flowing and the breathing. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Respiration. Respiration is one of the three things needed for something to be considered alive, right? And I don't mean like just breathing the way we do. I'm not saying that fish aren't living creatures because they get their oxygen from H2O instead. No, I'm talking about cellular respiration. The cells of your body are the things that actually use the oxygen and such, and they convert it into energy. You breathing is just the train pulling the oxygen to the cells. Amazon Prime for your body. Oxygen to your most distant muscles within a minute, or you die. die. 
Cellular respiration is how creatures of all kinds are able to live, even if they don't have access to oxygen from the air like we do. Instead, many of them break down other molecules, like the H2O we mentioned, to where they can use it now. Meaning that life has adapted over the entire globe to be able to use oxygen in all sorts of different ways. I mean, it's the basis of the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. It uses oxygen as the fuel for all of the processes it does. Pretty cool, right? But maybe you already knew that because it's pretty basic stuff. But now, now I'm going to learn you a new one. Recently, scientists have found an amoeba that doesn't breathe. In quotes. I mean, it's a tiny creature, and it doesn't really breathe according to our idea of inhaling stuff and exhaling other stuff. But, but even tiny things, even the microscopic little thingies, use oxygen. Like the tardigrade. It just needs almost no oxygen because it's just so tiny. I mean, they're able to go hundreds of years without breathing because of their hibernation magic stuff, but they do still need to breathe eventually. Unlike these newly discovered amoeba. No oxygen. Not even a little. Well, I say amoeba, but really it's a relative to the jellyfish, but is actually a parasite now because it has evolved away almost all of its features minus the two tiny little alien eyes. Isn't that really cool? It literally looks like our common depictions of generic aliens. <laughs> it's amazing. But actually, those tiny eyes are actually tiny stingers left over after this thing went nuclear on its own genome. For some reason, it thought the best thing in the world would be to lose basically everything and become an almost monocellular creature parasite thing. I mean, it's lost a lot of itself, and it even kind of ruined its ancestry in the process. By studying the genome, scientists are able to see older relatives and such, and almost every creature has something left over from their ancestry, like how we humans have many useless parts all around our body, and our feet suck. But this thing has scrubbed most of its ancestors from its genome, just gotten rid of them. They're unneeded impurities. So again, evolution is nuts. But hey, I mean, whatever works the best gets to decide, and I'm sure there aren't very many other parasites that live in the deep, mushy tissues of salmon. But they've lost their tissue, their nerve cells, their muscles, everything. Even the ability to breathe has been stripped from them. Yeah, no, it's weird, right? But I mean, it exists. So I guess it's not stranger than fiction. Or is it? Researchers don't really know what it uses for energy instead of oxygen, but, I mean, it still has to use energy, right? It's alive. It's a living... Well, it's not breathing. It's a living thing. Maybe we have to start changing that saying. It's a living, breathing thing, because, you know, living and breathing used to be synonymous, but not anymore! They thought, well, maybe instead of oxygen, it's just breathing something else, but there's actually no evidence of it breathing anything else at all, either. Like, it just doesn't breathe. But I mean, if any strange living thing is going to have the ability to not breathe, it being this sort of thing makes sense. I mean, you don't really have a good chance of getting oxygen by living deep underwater in the muscle tissue of fish and worms. Uh, so it does make some sense. But heck, it could be like how other parasites steal energy from their hosts, but this one, Heneguia salmonicola, which is the name of this thing that I'm mispronouncing. No. No, no, it, does, it doesn't even do that. Just straight up. Its cells don't have the ability to do anything even similar to breathing. But like I said, this thing's DNA has never even sequenced the idea of respiration. But maybe it did at some point, at some time in its ancestry ago, but it got rid of it. Meaning now it doesn't even have a mitochondria in its cells. Yeah, it's some weirdo hippie no energy parasite. It's just so strange, right? Wow, just like some Pokemon, I'm sure, maybe, possibly. So, like, I guess the, this is the part where I make it relevant to Pokemon or video games or something interesting. You know, the thing that you clicked on because it had a picture of a Pokemon with, like, the holding its breath emoji or something. I don't know what kind of clickbait I use. That's not my job. That's my sleep-deprived crunch brain that does the clickbait blame it. But yeah, uh, Pokemon. I mean, I'm sure most of the rock Pokemon that are like literally just rocks might not actually breathe, but they might. Just because they may be silicon based doesn't mean they don't need oxygen. Their bodies and metabolism might actually need more oxygen, so maybe they actually giga breathe. <laughs> but there are a few Pokemon we actually see in space, or rather come from space, 
they do a bit of space travel stuff, what's up with that? Arceus and the creation trio, it's fine, they're basically gods, you know, the spiritual fourth dimensional stuff, sure, they don't, they don't breathe, they don't need oxygen, that's, that's explainable that way. But then, Deoxys, while the Pokedex doesn't say it doesn't breathe, there are a few tidbits in the Dex entries that can point us to this hypothesis. Pokedex entries, like an alien virus that fell to Earth on a meteor underwent a DNA mutation to become this Pokemon. Huh, remember our friend, the wiggly alien looking creature this video has been all about? Yeah, its DNA has basically been nuked of breathing, yet it still lives. It might be that Deoxys was a normal virus or microbe that underwent extreme mutation that led it to its not needing to breathe and thus able to just space travel. Or maybe it never needed to breathe to begin with. It's a weird alien after all. Also, viruses normally don't actually breathe in the first place either, or have cellular respiration whatsoever either. In fact, there's plenty of debate about whether or not viruses can even be considered living. A virus is a microbe, something that doesn't really eat, so it doesn't need energy to break down food for more energy. They get all the power they need from the living cell they are infecting, which is why they infect cells. And yes, this does mean that COVID-19 is way more spooky. It's just an unintelligent thing, killing, not even knowing what it does, not even really having a goal. It's just mindlessly floating around, doing whatever its mutating DNA happens to lead to it doing because it just happens to bump into stuff. Whatever works best for its propagation. It's just a pile of maybe protein and DNA all programmed how to steal and ruin its host. Oof. But anyway, besides Deoxys and possibly some literally rock Pokemon, and any other non-breathers, well, when I said outer space, I'm sure a few of you thought of the Mew and Mewtwo in the original anime opening flying around the planet, but it's, this is, there's a stylized anime OP really worthy of being called canon. Also, Mew is covered in psychic energy, likely trapping some oxygen in there, so they still breathe. Other Pokemon do spring to mind, however, like Reuniclus and Porygon, and also Crabomitable, but that's actually just wishful thinking because I think it shouldn't breathe because I hate it and I want it to die. Reuniclus though is kind of a red herring because it is a couple of stinking gigantic cells, but that doesn't mean it doesn't breathe. I mean, I mentioned cellular respiration is breathing, so it just does that, but on a much larger scale. So yes, it still breathes, just not in a traditional fish or land animal way, but Porygon. Well, it's designed to be a space-traveling computer program, so why would it need to breathe? Well, come to think of it, there are plenty of Pokémon that aren't technically a living creature, so they don't need to breathe, like quite a few of the ghost types, right? They're all spirits, ethereal and all. Do ghosts need to breathe? I don't think so. Heck, come to think of it, no Pokémon breathe because they aren't real! Now then... Uh... There you go! I'm not running out of ideas! I just thought that that weird creature that doesn't breathe was neat, okay? Sorry for telling you what Pokémon could in theory not breathe and how that's even possible, alright? Jeez. I love y'all. Never stop using your noggin.